Thanks, Todd. Really great presentation. Really interesting. And um, yeah, so very happy to be here. Portland's a great city. Very cool. And um, yeah, today I'm presenting basically a financial comparison of a concrete building with a CLT building, both built in Australia. So my name's Dylan Kazmier. So a little bit about myself before we just jump into everything. So I work as an assistant development manager at Central Element that's based in Sydney. And then I also work in business development for a company based in another property development company based in New Zealand in the south. So this whole research came about part of my um, Master of Property and Development degree that I did at UNSW. So um, if you want a more further you know, in-depth overlook of all this research, I published a research paper through the um, Shanghai Modular Offsite Construction Conference last year. So you can find that on my LinkedIn under publications if you want to read more about it. And um, yeah, I'm pretty enthusiastic about you know, creating community connection and sustainable development in the, uh, in the built environment. And if you want to have a chat to me about anything, you've got my email there. Feel free to reach out. So this is the structure of the, uh, of the presentation. So we'll just sort of talk about why quite briefly, what the research objectives were. Um, we won't really touch too much on the characteristics of CLT. Everyone's pretty, pretty well versed on that. And uh, what the research gap was, what the methodology was, and then finally what the, uh, what the results are. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite concerned about, about the world and about global warming. I'm sure we all are. So, basically, uh, you know, we're getting quite close to this 1.5 degree cap set out in the, uh, in the, in the Paris Agreement. So, basically, in, in Australia, most apartments are built of concrete, and uh, around 5 to 8 percent of um, greenhouse gas emissions derived from, from cement production. So, you know, CLT comes forward as basically a solution to reduce carbon emissions in the, uh, in the construction sector. Um, so basically this whole subject research was sort of came about because I was interested in property development, sustainability, finance. So I just wanted to sort of interrogate into that. And um, also in Australia, you know, there's, there's hundreds of buildings worldwide built from CLT, but in Australia there's only two residential buildings, one in Melbourne and uh, one in Sydney. So I kind of wanted to figure out, you know, why, why this was, maybe to do with money, design, not sure. So uh, on the left, you can see the one built in Melbourne called uh, El Forte, and that got quite a lot of press, but there's another one in Sydney that's uh, affordable housing built, um, built by Strongbuild, and that's, uh, they just finished the structure on that one. And seems to be tracking pretty well. Uh, so basically, the, the aim of the research was to basically investigate the comparative financial performance of a CLT building versus a concrete building. That's from the developer perspective. And then, you know, it sort of fulfilled a gap in the in research that was out there. And, you know, I sort of concluded that, you know, unfortunately property developers, you know, they're usually profit driven. And if I can prove to them that, you know, they can make more money with CLT, then we should be able to get some good, uh, good headway with this. Uh, in terms of the characteristics, everyone's pretty I think everybody sort of knows knows about this, but um, just a few points is that it's, you know it's a renewable resource, and um, with the global annual forest stock growth, which we did a erupted this study, and you can probably build about 7.5 million apartments per annum from all of this uh, all this timber growth, which is great, and um, yeah, so it's also got this uh, reuse possibility. You know, you can build a building and then take it down at the end of its life and use it for another purpose, or the uh, CLT, and then. Uh, as we, you know, as we learned yesterday. Oh, okay. All right, and um, as we as we learned yesterday, with the um, life cycle assessment that outperforms concrete on pretty much all uh, on all levels. And uh, the other big thing is the time. It's really really quick to build, and that's the sort of point I'm I'm more interested in in terms of the uh, financial model of of CLT. Um, in terms of perceptions. Um, yeah, th there's a few studies done and people don't really know, know much about it, as you can see on the graph on the left. And in terms of economic performance, uh, no one had any idea about it. You know, about 34% just didn't, didn't know. And then the same on the uh, consumer side as well. 80% didn't know about CLT and what it was. 50% were concerned about the du long-term durability of it. And 57% uh, were unsure of the financial performance. And um, they basically concluded that the environmental benefit was key to 
unlocking um, you know, further growth through uh, conscious consumption. Um, so that's basically where the gap in the research was, is a whole bunch of information on the technical performance, lots of information on the environmental performance, um, perceptions has been covered quite well, same with construction efficiency. But uh, there's, there's some research out there on the, on the cost of CLT, but there's nothing really about the whole you know, holistic performance of CLT financially and how it compares to, to concrete. So uh, in terms of the methodology, so it's a quantitative and qualitative comparison of, of two buildings, one built out of concrete, one built out of CLT, one's real, it's in Sydney at the moment, finished in December last year. And basically what we did is we, we stripped out all the concrete in the concrete building and replaced that with CLT. And then we work it back to these um, performance indicators, which is total development cost, development profit, development margin. And um, what I think is most interesting is the, the equity IRR on the project. So just a few pictures. So completed development on the left and then the uh, study, study CLT building on the right. Um, so in terms of the financial appraisal method, so the, this is all modelled up in um, Estate Master, which is um, basically software for property development. And um, we're quite lucky in property, and the, the whole development equation is fairly, fairly straightforward. All it really is is your, you know, your gross revenue from the sale of apartments, less all your costs, you know, land, construction, interest costs and all that, and then you get your uh, indicators at the, at the bottom. Um, so the, the variables that were going to be subject to change were construction cost and the interest cost. And then you know, model that together to get your uh, indicators. So um, what's sort of important here is that I think equity IRR is a better indicator than development margin because it takes into account the, the time value of money. So with development margin, if the project takes two years or it takes 10 years, it's going to be relatively the, the same. It's going to diminish slightly because of um, the increased interest cost. But your equity IRR tells you, you know, how quickly your capital will grow on a, on a per annum basis. So I think that's, uh, that's, that's more accurate. Um, so for, for figuring out the um, construction cost of the CLT, basically um, I went through and I, I measured all the, uh, the cubic meters of CLT needed. So I'm, I'm not an architect or an engineer, so this, this building might not stand up. But um, yeah, so we, we did all that, so don't, don't interrogate that too much. Um, yeah, we figured out they probably need about uh, 3,000 cubic metres of CLT. So I understand um, Gary is actually presenting next about um, figuring out the cost of, of CLT and different ways of doing it, so quite interested to hear about that. And um, so this building was built under a lump sum contract of $26 million. So we had to figure out how that, how that number changed. So we removed all the concrete from ground four and above, put CLT in, and then also reduce the preliminaries, is that's a, that's a time-based cost. So basically that's just salaries, site establishment, scaffolding, and all, all that sort of thing. Which then leads us to a 2.5% uh, increase in the construction cost. Uh, overall, so went up to about $27.5 million. Uh, here you can see the, the construction timeline. So. So re research suggested that you have this 35% reduced timeline with building with, with CLT. So I, I factored that in and uh, we probably would have been finished mid last year instead of end of last year with the project. Uh, so this graph here, this basically shows you know, the, the time to, uh, to do the development. So the blue line is the, the equity contribution to the project and then the purple line is uh, all the debt you take from the bank to uh, get the project off the ground and you know that's to settle on the land for the construction element too. And then you can see in uh, December, just, that's when all the equity is uh, returned to, to the shareholders. And then you can see what happens with the CLT. Basically it's, it's returned sooner in, um, in June 2017. So just on the, um, on the debt side, I think this is a really you know, important part to note is that 80% of the cost is it comes from the bank. You can't really fund a project with cash and you know, it's just not really viable. So um, yeah, you basically have this $42 million loan that you use to, to create the development. And then you use this for your construction cost, your land cost, marketing, professional fees, and um, this is charged out at 6%. 
So I wanted to interrogate into this to see, you know, can the banks actually fund these projects? Because banks, you, by nature, they're, they're risk adverse, and CLT is a new thing. They think, they think it's risky, so I did a few questions with some, some banks. So my, uh, the, the first one was, you know, can, can this 6% interest rate be maintained? Because, you know, they might slam like a 10% interest rate on it just to, um, you know, just to cover the risk side of it. But they said, no, that's, that's fine, you know, we can, do, we can do 6% as long as the project sponsor is the same and the builder has a track record with CLT. Um, I, was quite, I was concerned that they, may, they, they wouldn't lend 80% of the cost, you know, because then that would, you know, that lessens your, your equity IRR. And they said, yes, they can give it 80%, but instead of a 5% contingency to be built into the feasibility, they wanted 10% to be built in. So in the um, feasibility equation, you, it's that you use all your contingency, even if you don't use it. So that's just in the equation. And then, you know, whether or not can, can they fund the project, and they said, yeah, that's great, let's, you know, let's do it. Um, so I started to model up the, um, the land holding costs and the interest costs. So we had a small reduction in uh, holding costs because that's time-based, land tax and rates, and uh, the same with the interest expense. So that, that reduced by 600,000. So really, you know, quite, quite a good saving there. Um, that's quite a busy slide, but that's, um, that, that's just the output of the financial model. Uh, you can see it's highlighted in green what the changes are. And then that's the CLT one. It's quite confusing to look at, so let's move on. Uh, that's the, these are the key changes in the, uh, in the feasibility. So construction costs went up, uh, contingency went up, uh, the land holding costs went down, same with the interest cost, and same with the, uh, the construction timeline. So that basically led us to a $1.5 million increase in the total development cost. So this is kind of, this is all the key performance indicators, you know, comparing the concrete building versus the CLT building. So we needed more equity for this project as there was an increased cost. So that increased by about 5%. Uh, development profit went down by 10%. Same with the margin, that went down 12%. Return on equity went down. But uh, more, more importantly, the, the equity IRR went up. So instead of a 33% return per annum on your equity invested, you actually get 36%. So it's, in the end, it's actually a more profitable project, I think. And I think this is a, is a, it's a good indicator to use because it's, it's, you know, it's the time value of money. And it helps you to compare basically the project to other, you know, other investment options, you know, like you put your money in the bank, you might get 3%, you invest in some stocks, 10%, so you can really understand, you know, what, what your true return on your money is. <coughs> so we just sort of conclude that, I think we've, you know, fairly conclusive evidence that CLT is more sustainable than concrete. Um, it's more expensive than concrete to build um, mid-rise buildings, maybe. And then building with CLT might result in less profit, less margin on the project, but an increased IRR. So the shareholders get back their equity quicker, and then they can then deploy that into some other projects. And uh, yeah, that's it.